Hey everyone and welcome to another video. I'm Simply G and today I'm going to be showing off all of the manga that I got for this month of September 2020. <laughs> There's quite a bit here so I'm not gonna spend too long on this intro. Um, but I hope you guys enjoy and I'm just gonna get straight into it. So first up is not technically manga, well it's not manga at all, but um, I finally caught up with the issues that I needed for the Bubbles fanzine. So I got volume zero, uh, which is just kind of a whole bunch of older um, scans of other articles, pretty interesting stuff. Um, volume four, which is the one that I needed. Um, I had up to three, so I got volume four. Volume five, or zine five, and number five, issue five, whatever you want to call it. Um, volume six, which is pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, issue 6.5, which was actually a, um, was this one the one for Black Lives Matter, or was this one for COVID relief. I think this one's the one for Black Lives Matter. Um, and I think issue zero was for COVID um, fundraising. But this one's a teensy one, as you can tell. Um, pretty, pretty cool. And then issue seven, which is um, sort of the more recent one in the main issues. Lots of really interesting stuff, lots of really interesting history about um, comics publishing and, um, you know, manga and translation and independent comics creators and all sorts of things. Definitely check it out if you haven't um, had, you know, read these before. The issue zero is a little bit pricier with eight dollars. Um, but usually the zine is is six dollars plus shipping um and they ship all over the world the first up for manga is a little bit of an unusual one one that i'm very excited about this is magician a by natsuko ichisuyo um translated by jocelyn ellen this is a manga that i put money towards by crowdfunding it's the very first of bdp's books that they put out. This is a publishing company um, run by or um, started by the Beguiling Comics team um, who are a very well-known established comics um, store in in Canada. Uh, they, they are involved with um, the, the comic scene over there. So this is their very first licensed, translated, etc. work that they put out. Really, really happy to have it. This is, I'm going to carefully flip through because this does get quite explicit. Um, this is a mix of short stories about teenage girls and their sexuality. Um, so it, be aware that it does involve underage girls in, in sexual situations so that may not be for everyone um just be be well aware of that but it's an interesting collection of stories exploring uh female like growing up and se sexuality and relationships and also kind of twisted ways that girls find validation through their bodies or connect with other people through their bodies um, and not just twisted ways, pretty genuine ways as well. But yeah, if you're not into that, uh, just yeah, be, be wary. Maybe don't pick this book up. Um, but yeah, I really was excited for this. It took a little bit longer to get to me comparatively to some other people who backed it. Um, I was very jealous. <laughs> it was on my friends for a while, but finally, finally got my copy and read it really enjoyed it i'm looking forward to whatever bdp wants to put out next whether that's why through crowdfunding or just whatever 
I am here for it. Definitely not a book that I, <laughs> you could even recommend for a wider manga reading uh, audience, of course, but if you're into it and you're into like small, small print and small press publishing and independent comics and all, all, all the good stuff <laughs> that you guys know I enjoy, um, definitely check it out. I think you can still buy it on their website. Uh, Glacier Bay Books had copies on their website for a short while. I don't know if they still do. Um, so you can get it. They're floating around um, additional copies. But I don't know if and or when um, they will be doing a second print run. Uh, I, I hope they do because it would be nice to have this available for more people. Um, but yeah, looking forward to their next publishing effort as well. Next is a Tokyo Pop book. Not something I say very often, <laughs> but actually I have quite a bit of Tokyo Pop in this month's pickups. This is one that when it was licensed, I was like, what is that? But then also it looked really cute. So it's like, uh, I'll try it. Um, so I, I picked this up and it was kind of exactly what I expected. This is the Fox and the Little, t or, and Little Tanuki, uh, Kori Senman in Japanese. And this is the story of a black fox spirit who was very powerful, very um, aggressive, and definitely like a bad guy in his past life. But he was sealed away uh, for 300 years. And since he has, all of his power has been sapped from him. But one day, a sun goddess frees him from his his bindings from being sealed off but um is give gives him a task to look after a baby tanuki who has powers magical powers like um all spiritual animals and teach teach this little tanuki the ways of being um basically a a god's helper being a spiritual animal and being training him to serve wh whichever god or goddess he may be assigned in the future and it's really sweet it's <laughs> i mean it's kind of that found family um or um situational parenthood <laughs> type of story um that with a grumpy grumpy guy who's pushed into looking after this cute adorable very loving sweet child and we also um the two of them also live with a very pretty very um well established white fox spirit who does serve um one of the gods and she kind of rounds out their little family unit and it's sweet. Like, this is definitely, I wouldn't, like, this is a kid's manga, or at least it, it seems like it's for a younger audience. Um, it's not super scary or anything, and oh my good, okay, so the artwork looks straight out of, like, an animated Disney <laughs> movie. Like, the very expressive faces, very cute, um, um, very well done anthropomorphized animals and also like for those who are into it, it get because these are bakemono or like animals with spiritual powers look also look how cute that zashiki warashi is look at him he's so cute <laughs> um but they have the power to transform so uh every so often you do have animal characters and their human selves so that they can hide in plain sight within human society but oh my gosh the furry agenda strikes yet again yet again but you can see like I don't know they look very much like Disney characters <laughs> um, Disney animals just very big eyes very expressive very cute um, but obviously with this, this Shinto 
you know, yokai twists of of these animals. It's fun. It's not like a must read. I I definitely think like for me, I like it. I think it's very sweet and cute because it has a found family element. I'm big into yokai, so that that's great for me. Um, if you're into anthropomorphic animals, then yep, yeah, you should probably read this. <laughs> they're not quite anthropomorphic, but they're they're certainly very humanized <laughs> humanized animals. Um, but it is good for kids as well. Like I think if you're wanting a manga for your kid that's not too scary, that's not too like full of coarse language or anything. This is a very much an all ages manga. Um, it yeah, it's cute. It's sweet. It's pretty much exactly what I expected from it. Um, it's an ongoing series by me Tagawa, and I. I mean, I don't know when I'll pick up the second volume, but it, this one did end on a cliffhanger, so I'm like, oh, I, I, I want to read more. <laughs> um, yeah, I, it's not like the super highest priority uh, for me, but it's cute, and if it sounds like something you or your children or your family or whomever may be into, then pick it up. So, on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, this is still sweet and cute, but it's definitely not for children. This is not a family fun <laughs> series. I got volume one of Shinichi Fukuda's My Dress Up Darling. This has a parental advisory warning on it. This is a Square Enix manga. And it definitely, like, it's not explicit, but it's definitely saucy, is the word that I would use. So this is the story of a high school boy who has grown up with his grandpa, who is this um, artisan. He, he makes the traditional dolls um, for, like, Girls' Day and things like that. Um, and this kid is just in love with these dolls. He loves how they look he really wants to become a great doll maker like his his grandpa but he can't quite get the face sculpting right um he's still working on it but he is good at making the outfits for these dolls um he doesn't really have any friends at school because he's too shy and too self conscious of his his interests of his hobbies to really make friends but one day he kind of runs into or um, is approached is um, coincidentally by this girl on the cover here, Marin, who's sort of the complete opposite. She's very outgoing, very personable, but she also has complete um, faith and no no self consciousness about her her hobbies. She's a little bit of an otaku. She's definitely into some unusual stuff but she's loud and proud about it doesn't let anybody tell her what she can and can't enjoy and he's really like in awe of that kind of jealous and he he really he thinks she's like in a completely different world from him because she is popular she does have that um she has allowed that <laughs> the ability to be kind of be into weird hobbies right without people judging her too hardly um but so uh unfortunately his his sewing machine at home stops working um which is a pain so he decides to go use the one at school um there's like a home ec class um that has all of the stuff and he just goes after school no one's in the club room so he just is pretty happy doing his thing but but his classmate Marin this girl who's Miss Beautiful popular outgoing very friendly as well um, very non-judgmental she runs into him she also goes to this room and they bump into each other and she reveals that she's trying to cosplay her favorite character from an Aerog game right <laughs> And she's she's super into it. She loves this character. She wants it to just be perfect. And she shows him uh, his 
well, she, she discovers his interest in dolls and his that he can make clothes, and she asks him if he will help her with her cosplay because her attempt just isn't very good. She doesn't really know what she's doing. And so he agrees to help her um, basically just get swept up in her momentum, and they become friends, and perhaps more. <laughs> As I said, she's a very attractive very attractive young woman, and uh, she's not afraid to, you know, strip down and get her measurements taken and, you know, flaunt, flaunt things, although she's not knowingly doing so. And, oh my god, this poor guy. <laughs> this poor guy, is, his life just got a whole lot harder <laughs> in multiple ways. But, um, tsh. Uh, so he, needless to say, they he helps her with her cosplay, and the fact that it's from an era game, like she makes him, well, she doesn't make him, but she she gives him the games to play, and and he he plays them in order to get like a more accurate accurate costume design, and I'm like, oh man, that's some dedication because it's it's not just an era game, it's like a super. Um, humiliation Dom play <laughs> Eric and I'm just like oh my god oh my god girl girl good on ya but oh my god <laughs> um, but like aside from that element it's not actually overtly sexual it is saucy it is spicy but nothing you never see anything too sexual happens and their friendship is really sweet I think Marin and and Gojo, who is our main character, have a really fun <laughs> fun relationship, even if it is a constant struggle for this guy to like not not just freak out because an attractive boy or attractive girl <laughs> is is focusing attention on him. Um, and yeah, I really, really like it. There's also, um, I appreciate the fact that um, this mangaka seems to know how the human body looks. And I mean, I, when I'm saying spicy, it is, it's pretty spicy in a good way. Like it doesn't, everyone's anatomically correct, which is nice. <laughs> I, yeah, it's a, it's a, if you don't mind a little bit of, you know, etchy and a little bit of, like, some thighs and titty, then, you know, this is definitely worth, worth the read. Also, okay, where is it? Where, because she comes over to get her, her thing done, yeah, measurements done in her bathing suit. And when I saw this picture, I was like, man, that halter top, that halter neck strings are doing a lot of work. They're doing a lot of work. <laughs> but, but, yeah, so it's definitely, like, it's, it's very sweet. It's cute. And I'm, I'm wanting to pick up the second volume. I think volume three is maybe out already. I don't remember. But this does have a couple volumes out already. Um, I've been meaning to get it for a long time, but the volumes are a little bit more expensive than general. Uh, not so much so for this this trim size but I didn't really know much about it but I heard good good things from a lot of people and I wanted to pick it up and I wasn't disappointed I laughed a lot I was like oh my god oh my god like I was stressed for this poor guy <laughs> a lot um and I thought that the two of them seem to make really good friends and I really like Marin as well um she's a really likable character who is you know, proud of what she's into and she doesn't feel any shame for her interests, but then also encourages that for everyone else. She never would never make fun of somebody for their interests and what they're into. And she's one of those popular girls who's like popular because she's actually nice, <laughs> not just because she's hot. And so that's, it's really, it's really nice to see. It's really lovely. And, um, yeah. Dang. Next, we have some Viz manga, um, with the most 
recent volume of Yona of the Dawn, volume 25. This is Mizuho Kusanagi's ongoing uh, historical fantasy-esque, um, I guess, reverse harem sort of uh, series about a young princess who has been ousted from the castle and in order to regain her position, um, become queen or empress or whatever, um, she has gathered four dragon warriors who have powers from various dragons of myth and legend and history within her, her country who follow her as the Crimson Dragon King. Um, and yeah, it's wonderful. It's great. One of my favorite series coming out right now. Uh, this particular volume, oh, <laughs> every volume of Yona just gets better and better. We have, um, so over the last couple of volumes, we've had Yona's home country. There's been a lot of tensions and skirmishes between a neighboring country who doesn't want to be overtaken by the current emperor, Suwon, or king, Suwon. Um, who they're trying to, they're ready for war in order for their freedom. Yona is trying to prevent that. She doesn't want the two sides to fight because, well, she doesn't want war. She knows how bad war can be, or is, not can be, is, always is. Um, and thus she tries to appeal to Suwon as sort of a middle ground between both parties representing the other side without the emotionality of, you know, the, the princesses of the, this other country. It's really, really good. Oh my God. I mean, I don't know how often I have to say this about Yona, but it just continues to get better and better and better. Um, yeah, I mean, there's political intrigue. There's some great action. Um, some times where you're going to gasp and cry and oh my god yeah some major stuff happens um and and dang i am here for it i love this series so so much and if you're not reading it definitely check it out um if not through the manga then the anime it's fun it's a good time yuna's a great protagonist all of the dragons and the other, like, um, Hawk as well, and, and the other, what is his name? Oh my god, the boy, the boy who looks after them all. Um, are great. Yona's team, I should say. All of Yona's team, her friends. Um, but then also the, the counterpoint or the other side of that, Suwon is a really interesting character. But a lot of nuance going on. Um, yeah, phenomenal series. Highly recommended. Definitely check it out. It's one that, despite me not always being a fan of super duper long series, I this series could go on forever and I would still be buying it because I love it so, so much. Definitely check out Yona if you haven't. Next for the Viz stuff, I have the most recent volume of one of my favorite series. <laughs> um, from one of my favorite creators. Oh my gosh, the back is so pretty. Uh, this is Oku Volume 17 by Fumi Yoshinaga, or Oku, The Inner Chambers. This is a historical um, kind of gender bend manga um, about an alternate Japan if, if the male population of Japan was greatly reduced through plague and women had to take on the roles of men in both business and government and whatever else. It's so good. It is so, so good. Um, definitely my favorite of these like alternate realities. What if women were in power sort of stories manga. Um, Yoshinaga, my favorite mangaka ever. Uh, I don't really hide that. I love all of her stuff and Oku is her current title um, along with What Did You Eat Yesterday. This series is ending or has ended. Volume 19 is the last one. Um, so very very close to the end. Cannot, like I'm gonna be sad but I'm also gonna be happy because 
I love it when a series that I love finds its natural conclusion, which I feel it has been building to. There's only so much hi Japanese history you can work with before you, you know, you get to modern day and you, or, um, you know, where you get to a point where you can't have this alternative anymore. Um, yeah, it is a very wordy manga. It is also a manga that uses um, an interesting mix of old-timey English in order to maintain the dialogue and the dialect of the time. And I love it! <laughs> I love it so much. So yeah, it mainly focuses on the inner chambers or the political going on for the emperor Obvious in the early volumes obviously because there is a great shortage of men the emperor is is a woman basically is becomes a emperor the emperor title is bestowed to the daughter the surviving daughter heir of the previous emperor and the inner chambers which is basically the uh, harem dedicated to said emperor or empress um it has to be filled with with young men <laughs> right like that you know it's rather than having a whole bunch of beautiful young women um to have various heir children with um they the young men young men are given the opportunity to make a life for themselves and um earn money for their family uh, as part of the inner chambers obviously hopefully get to sleep with the empress um <laughs> and sire and heir it's really it's really really good and it is it's i mean it is history it's exactly kind of what happened in history just with an alternate caveat as to a lot of the players were women and in such it doesn't make it doesn't like change like oh yes history would have this would have changed if a woman was power in power because women are can be just as greedy just as like vengeful just as power hungry as men like we know this <laughs> it's not a uh, inherently a exploration of gender and power but more so how society reacts and adapts to having to compensate for lack of a better word when when those who were previously in power now they're just become like a precious precious commodity almost there are so few men and boys in society that they have to be protected they have to be you know, looked after and coddled over and married off to good families like women were previously because you can't like the what if they die you know what what if you don't want your 20 year old son to die in the fields working um because there's like three men in the village there are three boys and a lot of women and you know there's no it's just easier to send women to be farmers and to be in charge of everything to be heads of the family it's so good highly recommend it i say this with every yoshinaga manga but this one is great especially if you like historical fiction with a twist um if you like gender bent or like what if alternate scenario manga with genders flipped check it out i'm super keen and i i kind of yeah <laughs> i'm also on the fence of like should i just wait until all the last volumes come out and then read them all at once or read them as they come because it's so hard for me to not read yoshinaga manga when i get them because it's just so good uh but yeah love the series love this mangaka and although the series is getting closer to its end, I, I shall be happy once it does. And hopefully Yoshinaga will have a new series and hopefully that will get licensed. <laughs> <laughs> 
Next we have some Seven Seas manga, the first one being Nicola Traveling Around the Demon's World, Volume 2 by Asaya Miyanaga. I recently did a first impressions on Volume 1 of this, but this is the story of a little witch called Nicola who's traveling around the demon's world, obviously, with a traveling salesman demon called Simon. And it's just, it's really sweet. It's about a, a curious kid discovering all about a world and people that she doesn't know. It's very much in the vein of like Somali in the forest spirit or um, what's the other one? I can't remember right now. <laughs> But those sorts of like an adult with a child who is very inquisitive and wants to learn more. This is another manga that is definitely all ages. It's you know, your kids aren't going to be scared or anything. This is for, for young people as much as it is for older readers. And it's it's really sweet. It's really cute. If you like this style of story if you like cute kid manga. Um, so in a similar way, it's also kind of like Barakamon. Uh, then definitely, definitely check out Nicola traveling around the, for the, or the demon's world. The artwork is lovely. It's also printed kind of in this black brownie color rather than just straight up black. Um, and it's very whimsical. It's very fantastical and... and like a fairy tale and that's it's oh it's so cute i this i think this volume's been out for a little while i can't remember it's so hard knowing when stuff comes out right now obviously because of covid issues but ooh, i enjoy this one a whole bunch and i i highly encourage people to pick it up if it sounds like something that they're into because it's is worth the read and it's a heart of manga or from heart of magazine that is, which is one of my favorite magazines. They put out so much stuff that I love, including all of the Kaurumori and Aki Ire stuff. Um, so whenever one of a manga from that magazine gets licensed, I, I jump on it because I know that I will like it. Um, and I haven't really been disappointed yet, except for once. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely worth your time. Give it a look if it sounds like something that would interest you. Next, Seven Seas Manga is the last one of a series, and that is Volume 5 of Blank Canvas, My So-Called Artist's Journey by Akiko Higashimura, bringing you another one of Higashimura's marvelous series to an end. Um, if you're not aware, this is an autobiographical manga, sort of, of Higashimura and her relationship with art and her art teacher and her evolution as an artist how how she grew to become you know the mangaka that she is today and the people most notably her art teacher who had an impact through that journey and influenced her in in you know how she how she became uh the such a beloved wonderful mangaka um and artist who could be proud of her work and the complicated relationship she had with this art teacher that as a mentor but also as a person um it's it's beautiful it's phenomenal Higashimura honestly like I've never disliked any of her manga I think she's so good at what she does um she's a powerful a powerful writer um and a phenomenal artist which kind of goes without saying but definitely check out Blank Canvas if you are somebody who is um, some has something that they're passionate about, whether that be an, being an artist or a writer or not even within a creative field necessarily, a programmer or whatever. If you really love or cherish your own mentor relationship that you have um, with other people in your own process of discovering and becoming who you want to be within the space that you are um and how that came about the people who impacted you I think it's it's so relatable so poignant and one that I highly highly recommend even if you're not a fan of 
Higashimura's other manga, like um, Princess Jellyfish or Tokyo Tarareba Girls, this is one that it's it's autobiographical, but it's also one that I think a lot of people can relate to and will be applicable or understandable to, within a lot of people's lives. Yeah, Blank Canvas, phenomenal series, absolutely amazing, and I I am sad that it's over, but happy that it's over as well. I, happy that it found its ending that it needed to find, and hopefully, hopefully, just putting this out into the universe um, with another of Higashimura's manga finished, we might get another one of them licensed. I know we have uh, Tarareba Girls Returns being published digitally with, I'm sure, the expectation of print down the line, but I would like, kind of going back to, to Oku, I would like the historical fiction with a gender bent historical figure ma main character. That's the one I want. I don't even know what it's called. It's the tiger one, Tora something. Uh, yeah, I, I want that one so bad. I want that one so bad. And I think that one's finished as well. Please, publishers, give me that, <laughs> give me that manga. <laughs> I want it. <laughs> but yeah, Tegashimura, read her stuff. And even if you're not a fan of her other stuff, read this. Next, we return to the furry agenda um, with Love on the Other Side by Nagabe. This is a short story collection focusing on various, um, various stories of love between a human and non-human character. Uh, so we have one with a girl and a giant crow. We have one with a girl and a wolf man, um, which is probably like mm, arguably the weakest, perhaps most problematic of the stories, but that's fine. Uh, oh, I mean, this one's pretty problematic as well, but we have a, with a girl and and a vulture, or like a bird of prey, some sort of bird of prey, who is raising her to be uh, his meal, but then ultimately um, he's like, no, we're a family, let's not eat. Um, and then we have with a girl and this like weird, weird monster creature who is a vampire, but he, you know, he's got like a bat face and like weird claws and stuff, and then, uh, a boy and a lion, like just straight up a lion. <laughs> this is an interesting one, and I, I don't know if it's romantic necessarily, but there's a lot of love here, and I, I think this is probably my favorite of the stories. Um, and then, uh, yeah, a story of a blind girl and like this creepy monster. Um, but this one's also really sweet as well, in a kind of horrifying way. Um, yeah, it's not super duper long, but it's interesting. And, I mean, hey, Nagabe, Nagabe keeps pushing their furry agenda, and I'm here for it. That's fine. Um, this is maybe a little bit weaker overall comparatively to the Wizarding Wisdoms BL book that they put out um, just because there's a lot like I don't know a lot of underage human characters but there's nothing explicit in this either I mean there's that that Wizarding Wisdom also has like a student teacher relationship so that one's not perfect but also they're dragons so like what constitutes age in dragon years when they live for centuries, if not millennia? Um, it, yeah, I mean, it gets hard when we're talking about inhuman characters as well. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a solid little book. I was really looking forward to it. It didn't disappoint me. It was kind of exactly what I expected from Nagabe, this sweet but also kind of like unusual and, um, I don't know, nerve-wracking, but kind of tenseness to some of the stories there's a lot of heart to it and although it is love on the other side I don't and perhaps it's framed to all be romantic relationships I don't see them as a romantic relationship there's a lot of 
like very shades of love, the more familial sorts of love um, that that is shown in this as well. So, you know, who knows? This is the free agenda after all. But, <laughs> but, but it is good. And if you liked Nagabe's other stuff, I'm sure you will like this to a certain extent. Um, it's definitely, definitely worth the read, if nothing else. I, I think it's very lovely. As always, Nagabe has just such masterful, masterful atmosphere. And I, I mean, they have great monster and animal design as well. <laughs> so, like, you can't complain if you're going in for the furry agenda either. Um, but yeah, it's not necessarily a manga for everyone, but it's one that if you know what you're getting into, you're going to get exactly what you expect. And that's a good thing. I mean, I, I liked it a lot. Next is a vertical manga. Um, this is volume six of My Boy by Hitomi Takano. Uh, a manga that is constantly riding the edge of, is this okay? Is this not okay? I don't know if I want to recommend it. <laughs> um, this one is another series that just recently is ending or has ended with volume nine. So, um, this is the story of, well, it starts as a story of a 12 year old boy who is, um, helped taken in whatever by a 30 year old woman who notices that he's out at night alone a lot. And she kind of becomes a, a parental figure friend to him when he's struggling um they they go their separate ways after their relationship is discovered and you know kind of chastised for warned against which is understandable she is in a full fully grown adult hanging out with a kid um and not necessarily in any inappropriate way but it's also like she was doing it without his father's notice like he did the dad didn't know that this was happening and so it is like it was not good necessarily it was from a good place but it wasn't or with good intentions but it, you know if you were a parent you'd be pretty concerned <laughs> let's just put it that way um but they reconnect again a couple years later this kid's now in middle school and he's finding it like he's never been able to forget this this young woman because she really was like his only friend and support system for a long time and uh, from his perspective she's kind of his first love as well and she's got you know mixed up emotions she doesn't know quite how to feel about this kid either so that's what I'm saying like I don't know if I can recommend this one because it is oh I dislike I, you guys know me, I do not like one age gap romances in general, but especially with minors, like, oh my god, do not do. Um, and this one has always kind of been walking a very fine line of, and honestly the first volumes weren't that at all. It was definitely a story of two lost and lonely people finding support um, in each other and and growing from that and like a more that sort of relationship you know a not romantic relationship and even now with our character like our male character being in middle like fifth he's fifth 14 15 um he's he's has these feelings of like love or whatever attraction to this this woman but it is also perhaps framed in a way that it is this this lingering attachment or this long time attachment to this woman who was for a long time his only support system and for a long time basically just his world like the only person he cared about and so now even in this volume she's she's uh, this is why it's hard because I don't know because she's saying that she wants to open his world up to get him to be more re receptive to other people and then meeting him in that new world where she is not the only person 
in that world. And that could be great. This could be one of those things where it's like, well, well, you know, he, they both realize that, you know, they were, they're important people to each other, but they're not like in love with each other. Or they, they're not really the people for each other. They were the people that they needed the support that they needed and to be able to be who they are now, but they don't end up together, right? Like it doesn't end game with them together or it could end game with them together. Like it's, we don't know. Um, I mean, I'm sure people who are ahead in the manga, um, comparatively to me do know, but I'm going to have to wait to see how it ends here see here and see the maybe possible backlash that the finale brings because again i i honestly like the first four five even this volume nothing is explicitly like it could go either way and if it goes the way that i want it to go it it'll be fine it'll be no problem and it would have been effective if it doesn't, then it'll just be another sad, like, <sighs> another sad situation where I'm like, oh, you had so much potential and then you had to end in romance, didn't you? Um, yeah. So this is not one, like, unless you're super into that as well, like, uh, maybe then pick this one up. But it's one that, tread carefully, if you're like me, uh, maybe wait for the last volumes to come out and then make your decision. But regardless, I mean, it's, it's beautiful. There's, the artwork is lovely and it, there's just so, some really gorgeous paneling in this. There's some moments that just are, where's the, where is it? Like that's so beautiful. I don't know, man. And volume four? five yeah oh there's this there's just some lovely stuff in there and um yeah it's, it's hard to recommend <laughs> and that by the end of it I might not recommend it at all I may not even want it in the collection at all but right now I'm still holding out hope that it doesn't betray my expectation <laughs> next is the first two volumes of a series that I've read a lot more volumes of um, digitally. I'm keeping up to date with this one via Crunchyroll. It's one that Kodansha Simul Publishing. Um, this is Wave Listen to Be To Me by Hiroaki Samura, uh, which recently got an anime adaptation, which I have not yet seen, um, but seemed to I mean, I think people liked it. I don't, I don't really remember what the reaction was. But this is a story of a woman who uh, works at a curry store who kind of falls into becoming a announcer, a radio um, personality. And her life, she's such a hot mess. Like, oh my god. She, <laughs> if nothing else, she's relatable. Like... All of the characters, like a lot of Samura's manga, um, they're just, yeah, their lives are a mess and they're not really willing to fix it necessarily. Um, but this is a great series. This is personally my favorite of Samura's manga. I, I really enjoy all of the characters. I like the radio aspect of it. There's a couple twists that you won't necessarily see coming. Um, it's exciting. They're like, there's a whole arc about oh, wait, much later in the, the series. So there's a whole arc where characters are kidnapped by a cult. Like there's some wild stuff that goes on in the series, but, but, um, it's funny. Like, it, <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I recommend it. Um, Minori, who is our main character, she's a com just a firecracker of personality she is no no bars held she just like is out there cursing and telling it like it is and complaining about this that whatever else and all the people in her life 
and the various just people at the radio company. It's not really a huge, big broadcast broadcasting center, and her block is like the the worst <laughs> the worst slot that you can get. It's like one to three a.m. or something. Um, but gradually she builds a pretty steady listenership. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's fun. It's a great time. And this is, I think, the first of Samuro's manga that I read, perhaps. Because I, I was reading this for a long time before I ever read Blade of the Immortal. Um, so maybe, maybe. Uh, but yeah, it's a great series. Um, I, it's been in digital, uh, for a long time, Kodansha has several volumes digitally released and as I said Crunchyroll has the chapters up to date as do I'm sure other places that Simul Club uh, chapters and it's fun it's it's really 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 good I highly recommend it um, and if you enjoyed the anime I'm sure the manga is something you will enjoy perhaps even more who knows I still need to watch the anime so I can't really say how good or bad of an adaptation it is um but yeah so so definitely check it out and i'm i it's been an interesting trend recently where kodansha puts out the first two volumes of a series on the same day um and this was one of those uh drifting dragons was another one of those um there's a couple other titles that they have upcoming that they're doing that with and i'm not i mean i'm not going to complain <laughs> that's great uh but it did it did take me a little while to pick these up just because, um, well, honestly, because they kept getting pushed back. Um, they'd been released in the US, but the, the Australian fulfillment wasn't happening because obviously supply distribution is, is very hard right now. <laughs> the, the shipping, um, postage is not, not doing too well, but anyway. Shrug the shoulders, can't really complain, and uh, yeah, looking forward to picking up more of the series down the line. Another series with a recent anime adaptation that I loved um, is Volumes 3 and 4 of Toilet Bound, Hanako-kun. I think Volume 4 is the last one of the series that was adapted into the anime, maybe 5, I can't really remember. Um, but this is the story of... A bunch of kids in high school um, who there's ghosts and mysteries and mysterious things are happening it's mainly about our main character who becomes the ass personal assistant to Hanukkah uh, the, the ghostly boy who lives in a bathroom stall in one of the girls bathrooms um, and he's kind of the the Arbiter, the law and order of the seven mysteries of the school. And so they have to find, like, a lot of issues are happening with the supernatural elements of the school. And so they have to try and, try and stop that, try and fix it or prevent it or whatever else. We also have this character here who is a year younger. He's in the middle school, um, who... It comes from a long uh, family of exorcists or priests or whatever. His older brother is one of our main characters, kind of princes. She she was in love with him for a short time, um, handsome, popular, whatever else. And obviously, we discover later is also an exorcist and is a bit more um, heavy-handed, doling out the punishment towards towards the supernatural at the school um, than his younger brother who has built up a rapport with with Hanako and some of the other the other seven mysteries it's so good I love this series so much <laughs> um, it's quite long ish already in Japanese I think the 12th or 13th volume has come out um, the fourth I think is the most recent. I don't know. I'm a little bit behind on the series. The anime was great. I think a season two is coming out. I don't remember, but it's great. You should definitely check it, check it out. The art style is honestly one of my 
favorites that I already showed you, but like look at the color page and I just, it, it's so, it, it suits it so well if it would focus. There we go. Um, definitely check it out. I love it a whole bunch. And it uses, again, like these colors, the darks, um, very, very, very well. I have the art book for this series because I love it that much. It's, yeah, really lovely. Definitely check out Toilet Bound Hanukkah. I mean, don't let the, the name put you off because it is a little odd, but it, it literally is in reference to the, the mist, like the seven mystery element of Hanukkah-san. Who is what this what is referencing about usually a little girl ghost who is haunting a toilet stall in the girl's bathroom and will grant you a wish um rather than being a little girl it's a little boy well little it's a young boy <laughs> teenage boy um who is haunting and and they are literally bound like a spirit bound to the toilets, to the bathroom. Um, so that's what is referencing in the title there. But uh, Aida Iro does a great job with this manga. Really looking forward to reading past these volumes as well, pa past stuff that's been adapted into the anime because I want to read more. I want to know what happens. Thanks. Yeah, I would really, really want the next couple volumes. Next for Yen Press, we have the second volume or the second book of Little Miss P, uh, The Second Day. This is a comedy manga <laughs> uh, that is about menstruation and those who menstruate and basically how annoying it is, how much it affects your life um, and how various women and those who have uteruses deal with the frustration of of having to spend several days out of the month worrying about this or dealing with it at least or maybe not worrying about it because sometimes menstruating is a good thing sometimes it's not you know we there's a lot of there's a lot of variation in how uh those of us in the world who get their periods deal with it. Um, yeah, it's funny. <laughs> it's obviously a little bit odd. It's perhaps not a manga for everyone, but I, I always appreciate a manga that can be clear and approachable and humorous about women's health. It seems to be a topic that does get a lot of, um, a lot of people kind of ignore discussion about or are too uncomfortable with discussion about which is sad because I think health health in general um sexual or otherwise um and menstru menstruation isn't sexual health it's just health like it's just health is an important topic and I think one that especially people who do not menstruate generally cisgendered guys uh don't always feel comfortable talking about when honestly it is if you have you know if you have women in your life whether they be your partner whether they be your mother sister whomever it's you should care about it like it's a part of their their lives or whomever in your life who menstruates it's something that you should care about or at least sympathize or empathize about um this is a I mean, it's, it's an odd one, but I like this manga, and I'm looking for, I think the third volume is the last one? I can't remember. It is still technically ongoing, um, and I wouldn't su be surprised if the third or fourth day is, like, the last one, because that's usually uh, how long, a lot, the, I think that's the average length of, of, of period for a lot of people. Um, but yeah, so we have we have little Miss P, who is this anthropomorphized character here, who pops into these characters' lives 
every so often, well, every so often, hopefully, cyclically, hopefully once a month, um, unless, unless they're, you know, doing something to prevent that. And uh, saying like, oh, hey, you have to deal with me over the next couple of days. And it's, it's just a funny and lighthearted look at something that for a lot of people can be a bit of a pain in the butt, <laughs> can be um, very inconvenient for the most part. Um, but again, as I said, some, for some people it's, it's very exciting when they get their period because they don't get it very often or that they were waiting for it <laughs> um, for various reasons. So yeah, Little Miss P, the second day. Great follow-up to the first one. I'm definitely going to be picking up the rest, whether that be another one or two volumes, who knows. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a fun, fun little time. Speaking of women's health, <laughs> uh, the next Yen Press manga that I picked up was I Don't Know How to Give Birth by Ayami Kazuma, which, I mean, same. This is an autobiographical uh, manga kind of memoir about this woman and her struggles with her partner to get pregnant and then her personal her just her personal journey of pregnancy and all of that that entails um she was a little bit of a late mother she didn't um have her first child or her her kid i don't know if she has any more since um until she was uh, in her 30s and it and sort of the struggles of that they she or it took a long time it and a lot of money and a lot of effort for her and her husband to conceive um, and then after that the just various things she wasn't expecting or um, a lot of self-doubt she had she's not exactly the most maternal person um, the the conflict of as and this is something that I kind of noticed from the very beginning is that she seemed to want to have a baby for her husband's sake um which is I mean that's a lot of effort <laughs> if you're not super keen on wanting a child I that's not to say that she's a bad mother or that you know she couldn't change her mind and want a, a kid but especially early on it's because her husband's like, wouldn't it be great to have kids? And she's like, sure. But she had pri like previously just assumed that they wouldn't have kids or that they were fine without kids. Um, so, yeah, I was like, hmm, hmm. But, of course, like, parenthood is <laughs> is whomever, you know. It, she, they put a lot of effort into having a baby so I at some point you I would assume that she's like yes I'm going through all of this pain and suffering and money um <laughs> to have a kid because I want a kid not just because my husband wants a kid um so yeah that was I don't know I was kind of like well maybe maybe uh, yeah I'm not I'm not gonna cast judgments on people's people's uh choices but I think that there was also, there there probably should have also been a conversation of like, well, do we need kids? Which I don't know ever happened. At least it was never shown in the manga. Um, and the two of them come to the decision otherwise than him fielding the question and her just agreeing to it because she loves her husband, right? Uh, but yeah, it's an, like, this is definitely not, I wouldn't say this is my favorite autobiographical manga um I <laughs> have never been pregnant <laughs> I'm not a mother um and I'm probably not going to be for uh, a while at least <laughs> um although I do hope to someday have uh children and a family um but this is this is very much like and it's always the case with the memoir but this is i i wouldn't say like get this as a guide for for pregnancy because it's not that it wouldn't i wouldn't say this is like 
informative necessarily in how to have a child or how to prepare for a child. This is just about this woman's experiences with her own personal struggles, her own personal health, and uh, her own pregnancy issues that she had over the course of the nine, well, multiple more months than that because they had many, many months of like IVF and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, this is one to pick up if you're interested in, in personal memoirs, but not one you should pick up if you're interested in like actual information about pregnancy, if that makes sense. I don't know. Maybe that doesn't make sense. It was good. It was solid, but it's not one that I would like, you have to go out and buy and read. Um, it's, it's just another in the long line of autobiographical memoir manga. And personally, I'd say it's the weakest of the bunch, at least that I've read so far. Uh, but yeah, it's not bad. It's just not brilliant in the same way that some of the other stuff that we've seen in this genre has been over the last couple years. Okay, next is um, a whole bunch of manga from one series. This is the last of the normal series, quote unquote. Um, but I finally, well, finally, I mentioned that I would be getting that this this month, last month in my pickups video. But this is Inuboku SS um, by Koko Fujiwara um, or Inuboku Secret Service. Uh, volumes one, volumes two, oh my god, volume three, volume four. Ugh. Volume 5, Volume 6, Volume 7, Volume 8, Volume 9, and Volume 11, which is the, the last of the series. Uh, so this is a 11 volume series. I already have volume 10, which was, uh, I showed off last month about a high school girl and her SS member, her secret, uh, service member. So she is a f high school girl, a little bit standoffish, uh, certainly the Sundre archetype, um, and so she has moved to this kind of very elite private apartment building where all the residents have a secret service member who attends to them and it's only like uber wealthy uh, families who send their kids here um, and we discover that all of the residents including the secret service members, including like the, the chef, the guards, whomever are all, they all have yokai genes within the family. And so they have various powers of the yokai that is, is in their bloodline. Right? So our main character, she has a uh, ogre in her, um, in her, bloodline in her family um, and her secret service member is um, Fox and you know there's a Tanuki there's I can't remember the the name of of the um, the yokai the big skeleton this big skeleton the, the it has a name I can't remember one of those there's a Yukiona or snow woman um there's a whole bunch of like pretty recognizable yokai uh within the series and so not only is this a story about our I, the relationship between this this girl and her secret service member who has who's very devoted to her um <laughs> bizarrely so he's just like completely 
everything that she does says um, he's he's very dedicated to a fault um, and he they have a past together which is uh, exposed or uh, revealed in volume two so it's sort of a romance between these two you know, age gap but we'll get to it in a, in a bit um, but also the all of these members because of their powers they have to fight full blood Ayakashi yokai um, at night to protect themselves and protect the city and things like that um, and then also just the various relationships um, and interactions within all of the different the different residents of this fancy elite um, um, place what is it apartment that's the word I'm looking for so yeah you can see them in like human form here and then they're not inhuman they just have like inhuman abilities this is them in their quote-unquote yokai form so you can see like she's got the demon or yeah demon oni horns and she like is very strong and he's a fox so he's got the tail and the ears and the whatever else um yeah it's this is a series that i wanted to read for a while i've seen the anime which was okay my least favorite part of the series was the relationship between these two characters um it's not something that ever really appealed to me and it was my, the weakest part of the show in my opinion as well but I did like the characters uh both of these characters separately I did like all the side characters the premise was interesting and I've heard as well from from people that the manga kind of goes in an unexpected direction there's sort of a big plot twist midway that changes things up which I think also perhaps affects the age difference or the age gap r aspect of the romance I don't know because I haven't read the whole series yet um, but I'm pretty sure because also the whole point the whole thing is that these families send the the members of their family that have these powers because it's one person within like every generation or whatever it only shows up every so often um these yokai abilities and they're always i guess reincarnations of the the person of themselves they always look exactly the same um and have this ability and it brings good fortune to the family uh so there's that element as well as of reincarnation um it's interesting it's interesting and I hope to read more of it this is the only one of Coco Fujiwara's manga that we ever got in English and very sadly she has since passed away it is also I think one of the series that is going out of print um, from from Yen Press so I wanted to pick it up whilst I still had the opportunity to I picked up this all of these volumes one one to nine and then 11 via an ebay lot and i was able to find volume 10 um, from kinokuniya i think uh, which was good because that one i think is one of the more rare volumes to find to get who knows i'm gonna shrug my shoulders because i was able to get it for like the normal price but yeah i look forward to reading more of this the first two volumes were stuff that i remembered and it's it's done pretty well like I'm not gonna complain it was a pretty solid start to the series and um, yeah I'm gonna keep reading and see how I go I, I've been enjoying it thus far and I sort of know what to expect so I guess I'm just gonna keep keep enjoying it hopefully <laughs> Next we have some BL, um, so if you're not interested in that then uh, yeah, I mean there's there's something else after the BL as well, but it, thanks for watching if you're not interested in this and going to click off. Uh, but so first off I have a Sublime volume, uh, this is the debut, uh, one of their new works, uh, one that I was really really excited for, so this is Toritan Birds of a Feather by Kotetsuko Yamamoto. I love Kotetsuko Yamamoto uh, she was one of my first and favorite 
BL mangaka um, when I was first getting into the genre. And her, all of her stories are pretty sweet. There's, they're not super duper too explicit. Um, and this one especially, there's nothing, nothing explicit about this one. Uh, at least with volume one. I think it's a two volume series as well. So it, it may change a little bit in coming, coming volumes. Uh, but this is the story of, what is his name? Inosaki and, uh, yeah, okay. Um, so our main character here, Inosaki, he's 23. He is technically a private detective, like a private eye, uh, but generally he's just like a jack of all trades, um, does a bunch of odd jobs for the people around the neighborhood, mainly dog walking. Um, but unbeknownst to everyone around him, he has the ability to talk to birds, or at least understand birds and talk to them. Um, he has a mysterious power to understand what birds are saying, and he doesn't like birds. He kind of hates them and is afraid of them because in his childhood, he's like, oh, hi, Mr. Pigeon. And the pigeon like cussed him out. And so he's just been, <laughs> he's just been traumatized since. Um, he doesn't like birds, but he does love cats. And so he very often goes to his landlady's um, cafe that she runs. And there's a whole bunch of cats there. And he hangs out and enjoys the, the quality time with the cats. Um, along with the landlady is also her son, um, who's a like in his final year of high school, who's just kind of this quiet, um, you know, quiet guy who doesn't say much. He's pretty, pretty to himself. He's the other character on the front cover here. And uh, one day when, when our main character is walking home, he ends up in a conversation with a crow, a crow that he names Crow, uh, who's just like really suave. <laughs> like this crow is very likable, very um, approachable, and it kind of goes beyond our main character's general fear for for birds or dislike of birds. He 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 strikes up this friendship with a crow. Um, and after a while, he, he, he kind of starts realizing that he wants to see more of this crow. He wants to see, like, he's, <laughs> he wants to know how the crow is doing. He wants to become closer friends with the, with the crow. And he realizes he's fallen in love with this crow. Uh, <laughs> and this crow, every so often, reminds him of the, his landlord's son for some reason. Um, their voices are the same, and, I mean, he seems more talkative, but this crow, he's, he just, every so often he'll think that the two are very similar. Um, and so he, yeah, he falls in love with this crow, kind of has his heart broken by this crow, uh, <laughs> but then also realizes, uh, over time, he gets over the crow, and he realizes he has, um, feelings for for uh, this this boy, this high school boy, um, who's the son of his landlady. Who, it, for anyone who is worried, they do explicitly say he's eighteen. He has his eighteenth birthday in the book. So if that's something that worries you for volume two or even volume one, they he is now technically an adult. Um, <laughs> not that that really changes much, but. You know, it's if you're if you're wary of that, he is an a, a cons consenting adult. There's nothing explicit in this volume. It has an explicit content warning, but literally nothing explicit happens. And we have one chaste kiss at the end. <laughs> That's not explicit. I gotta tell you. Um, but yeah, Katasuko Yamamoto. I really like her her series. Um, but even before I was reading or buying manga, like I. Shame to say, but I did read a lot of her stuff in scans. She doesn't have a lot of stuff in print. DMP has put out, uh, they put out one of her books way back in the day, which I own. Um, and they put out some of her stuff digitally since, uh, but not a lot of her stuff ever made it to print. And a lot of her big titles um, haven't 
made it to print and I or haven't been licensed so I do hope that we see if this does well because I and I hope it does I do hope we see more of her stuff being licensed because it's sweet and it's funny like it's got a great sense of humor um none of her couples that I can remember immediately jump out at me as being problematic it's more so a sweet just falling in love and odd couple a lot of odd couples <laughs> with her manga um one of her most popular and most famous title Honto Yaju Honto Yaju um is about a yakuza member and a policeman but not in the same way that like a twittering birds manga is um it, it's it's wholesome it's sweet and wholesome and all of her series are pretty sweet and wholesome they can be a little bit spicy but nothing super duper explicit and uh i think i think most of the sex is fade to black stuff like you don't really ever see see anything i don't remember it's been a long time and i don't read scans anymore so i'm not gonna check but tori tan <laughs> bit of a bizarre premise little bit odd but oh give it give it a shot it's fun it's funny and Yamamoto is really good at what she does and it's only two volumes so you know it's it's worth a look and I want to get more of her manga available in English so please next is another debut different publisher though this is the first volume or I guess the first arc whatever I don't know these don't have numbers necessarily of um, Canis, or Canis, Dear Mr. Rain by Zuck. This is a book put out by Kuma, um, one of their BL titles. I think the second of their BL print releases that they've done. I'm going to show the color pages. But this is the story of um, a hatter, uh, aka a man who, who designs and makes hats, and the mysterious young man he picks up in the rain who helps him with his store um, when they're having this big sale on and uh, you learn a little bit more about this character's personal struggles and why he was sitting out in the rain and why he he's very nihilistic doesn't see much of a future for himself um, and why he behaves the way he does almost like a dog which is why we have the ma the title being Canis or Canis. Um, our work's lovely, interesting plot, great great introductory book, I think. Not explicit <laughs> whatsoever, whatsoever. I, I've heard the third, I don't know if it's the third book or the third like story arc in this series is when it gets like explicit explicit like very explicit which fits more along expectations for kuma if you're not aware kuma is faku's bl and yuri imprint um so an imprint focusing on queer erotica which is cool which is wonderful um i love i love faku i don't own any of their books aside from the kuma ones just because i haven't really delved into a lot of their hentai or at least a lot of their print hentai so I, I don't I I just don't don't own a lot of it but I really respect them as a publisher um, and their relationship with their artists that they have um, and that extends with 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 Kuma um, but yeah great great little book but if you're if you're expecting it to be explicit like I I think people would considering Faku is a hentai or an erotica publisher there's nothing there's not even a hint of dick <laughs> in this um so so yeah maybe maybe um underwhelming for some people but uh as the groundwork it's very interesting I've heard nothing but good things for the series and I look forward to the subsequent volumes if or when we get them Okay, the next couple volumes are all from Tokyo Pop, their Love Love um, label. And this is one that I didn't know anything about. Um, the title kind of put me off, wasn't going to pick it up. And then uh, it was Dynamic Dylan and someone else 
who read it and was like, this is great. I loved it. It's really sweet. And I was like, what? Hmm, that's interesting. Maybe I'll give it a shot. And then I read it and then I cried. <laughs> so moral of the story is don't judge a book by its cover or in this case, its title, which is uh, Don't Call Me Dirty by Goro Kanbe. This is a BL manga, also not explicit whatsoever, a little bit hint of explicit at the end, but really not, um, not explicit comparatively to what I think people regard as BL. This is a story of a young gay man who is having a lot of issues with the, the guy that he has feelings for, um, that he's like in love with who either is it like he doesn't want to come out I don't think he might not even be gay um so he's trying to distance himself and he's trying to cling to our main character he's trying to cling to this relationship trying to work things out because he does care about this guy who's being a real jerk to him a lot so he is very unsure about himself um and and he has a lot of he's very self-conscious about himself because um when when he was trying to be intimate with this guy he has feelings with um he basically called him dirty like i don't think i can sleep with you that's gross like you know it's not right and we shouldn't do this blah 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 um which plays into this don't call me dirty the the his self-consciousness or his um, upset his trauma at at being gay being seen as dirty or un, you know, unclean unhealthy um, but uh, whilst he's nursing his heartbreak well really as he's like holding out hope and trying to work things out he um, befriends a homeless man who is kind of in the area who's so our main character, he works, his father works at a liquor store, or owns a liquor store, and next door is like a snack store run by an old man. And so every so often he, he goes over to help um, basically run the shop for this old man because he's like sleeps throughout the entire day. Um, and so this, this homeless man wanted to buy some food from the store and that's how they kind of meet. And obviously being homeless, He's seen as by wider society as very you know unclean, as very dirty, as you know not someone you want to associate yourself with, and so that's really where the title comes from. Both of them, in their own way, different but but different ways, but are so seen by wider society as unclean or dirty, um, and be, and so our main character has a lot of empathy for this homeless man they they do become quite close over time and he kind of relies on him um whilst he's he's so uncertain about his relationship with this other guy and very quickly they they kind of grow closer and he realizes he's starting to fall in love with with this guy this homeless man and the uncertainties on both sides uh, because of that it's really good it's really sweet it made me cry and uh, if you are aware of Tokyo Pop's books that they put out there's also a book called Don't Call Me Daddy um, which also the title oh <laughs> um, not not great better better I will say that both of the titles are better than the Japanese title which is like dirty darling and dirty or and daddy darling or something mm -mm. Uh, but that is actually um part of this like they are related and that is um about this character our main character his father and his long time friendship and maybe more with with the the son of the the snack store next door uh they're both in their like late 50s um and the potential relationship there and ooh, 
I want to read it now <laughs> because there's there's hints of that there's like the foundation for it is is laid in this book and I want to read more about it because ooh it's I, if this one hit me so hard I'm looking forward to to neck more volumes I'm looking forward to more and I <laughs> I want to read more of Guadalcanbe stuff because this was good this was really good and I'm, it makes me kind of upset that Tokyo Pop is lessening licensing so many good series that I want especially BL and Yuri dang it <laughs> but don't call me dirty don't let the the title you know dissuade you it's it's great it's a solid solid little book and I I think it it's got a lot of heart more than it's got like a larger message to it so check it out Next is another one of Tokyo Pop's BL titles. This is volume one of Koi Monogatari Love Stories uh, by Toru Tagura. Um, so, okay, I was, I had heard good things about this from a lot of people. It seemed a lot of people were very excited. This is one that um, people, I guess, were falling through scans and thus were like super invested in it already. And we're really happy that we finally got a print release. All good things, all great. Um, so I, I guess I went into this with high expectations because I didn't, I didn't like this ser this first volume very much. It, I, I'm willing to give it a second volume. Like I, I, obviously there's something that people like about this series and it may take a while to get better, but there was, um, the way that some of the characters speak to each other and discuss being gay is really problematic maybe is the best word um i didn't it didn't make me want to root for their relationship um necessarily i will say the premise is all right like it's pretty solid um and there's potential there so i don't i'm not going to say it's a lost cause or anything and again i people enjoy it so there's obviously something there to enjoy um so this is a story of two high school boys um one who uh is kind of told that well he he becomes friends with this guy and who doesn't really have does he not have friends i can't really remember it's been a while since I read this volume, I read it at the beginning of the month. Um, so they become friends and uh, the, he finds out, or he, one of the boys like discovers um, that the other guy is gay and as, and he's kind of like never had to consider that he's quite prejudiced the gay, about gay people beforehand. Um, but as he becomes closer friends with this guy and as their relationship gets closer, he sort of starts to reassess um, how he feels about gay people and then like also this guy in particular. Um, and I say like it's not really... Obviously it's early days for this character. As I said, he is quite prejudiced. He's quite... Um, he just the way he talks about gay people early on is uh not great and sadly um i wouldn't say unusual um but again over time he kind of becomes more comfortable with the idea of of queerness and being gay and this this guy and his relationships and his feelings um oh yeah it's because um he finds out that this guy has feelings for one of his best friends and uh, yeah he's kind of put off by that he d dislikes that you know he's like I, I know my friend's not gay and so like th that's gross don't like dude what the fuck like don't do that um even though this this other guy this kid he's like not gonna confess or anything he's just um you know pining from afar or whatever um but yeah soon he kind of this this our main character he's kind of comes around to being more accepting and it's it's a rocky start 
Let's put it that way. I don't really like the main character very much obvi for obvious reasons, but there is a lot of ways he can improve. I don't think he's going to be bad forever. And I also, there's a lot of like heteronormativity maybe that uh, is uh, put onto this, like the, the explanation of being gay. I don't know. It's, there was something off about this. It wasn't terrible, um, and uh, I will probably give it another volume to warm on me, but uh, right now, I, it's not one that I would recommend, let's just put it that way. It's one that I think doesn't do enough to counteract the dislikability of of the main the protagonist from his earlier stuff um his earlier uh explanation maybe things will change i hope they do because you know i don't i don't want to i don't think the idea and it doesn't seem to be set up that you're supposed to agree with this character and his bigotry and his bad attitude um but I also don't want it to, like, forgive him super easy and, like, say, oh, no, he's better now and that's fine. Like, don't even um, worry about all that past stuff that he said. Um, I, I do want it to be more gradual um, and more, <laughs> more overall uh, change in attitude. But maybe that's expecting too much. Who knows? We'll see. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the artwork is nice. It's, there's a lot of, like, potential here, as I said. But, um, not the greatest likability for our main character. Which is perhaps a shame. Which makes you less wanting to root for their relationship. Which, maybe that's the point. Maybe that's the point. We'll have to find out. Finally for BL and finally for Tokyo Pop BL manga, we have Saki Sukahara's Replay. Um, this is a story of two childhood friends who are also the battery of their baseball team. Um, they're very oftenly joked as being like a married couple. They're always together. Um, they're inseparable. They always seem to know what the other wants, etc. They can commu They're just. They've just been together forever, and they're they're this. They have since been dubbed the the married couple of the team, but now they they're in the third year. They've graduated from or retired from their club the baseball club in order to focus on studying and whatever and it's the first time that these characters have been separated um and their 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 future together is no longer certain and so we find out that um is it the pitcher no the catcher <laughs> he has had feelings for his friend for a long time but he doesn't want to inconvenience his friend. He doesn't want to confess to his friends because he knows that their relationship will change. And so he's trying to quietly distance himself in order to make it a cleaner break once they both graduate and move on with their lives. Um, but the, the catcher, no, the pitcher character, he, he notices this and he wants to reinstate their friendship. He soon discovers that his friend has feelings for him and then he has to think about like what what are his feelings is he just sad that they're growing apart as friends or does he want something more from this boy whom he has been so close with for so long it's really good <laughs> it's really good um i'm a sucker for these sorts of setups um i mean basically married partners in crime some baseball battery oh, angst childhood friends love this is my shit <laughs> it's very good 
Um, it's like with a lot of the BL that that Tokyo Pop has put out, a bit of um, a ser like series that I've never heard of, creators that I've never heard of, perhaps. Um, but it's really surprisingly good. Um, I liked this one a lot, and if you like sweet uh, childhood friends to lovers with a little bit of dr angst drama thrown in there for good measure, then check this one out. Um, yeah, really, really, really good. Last but certainly not least, we have Moribito, Guardian of the Spirit by Nako Uehashi. This is um, the novel, the original um, of Moribito. This is what the, this book is what is the adapted into the anime, which the anime does expand on it because this is obviously a quite short book about a uh, spears woman who is contracted to protect the young prince of her country, um, to protect him from from people trying to murder him, basically, and give give him safe passage because this prince has like a, a a guardian spirit within his body um, that is sort of an oracle. It it symbolizes or it signifies great change coming to the land and so people are trying to get rid of him in order to change destiny and and prevent a possible threat. I can't remember, it's been a little while since I've watched more Ibito. Really looking forward to reading this book. Um, sadly, the series, um, I think it's finished, uh, might technically still be ongoing. Uh, it has nine or twelve books in all. We only ever got the first two from Scholastic just because I don't think it's sold super well sadly. Um, but I think all of them follows our main character Balsa. Um, I haven't read the second one. I'm hoping to get that one as well though. So maybe someday in the future you will see that in the pickups video. But I, I yeah, this is the original series. I've recently read Uehashi's the Beast Player um, books, which I think Scholastic or um, was, was it Scholastic? I can't remember. Um, whoever published it was a bit smarter. They put that out in two-in-ones. So um, each volume contained two books of the four book series. Um, so it, they were able to complete that one comparatively to Moribito, but I, yeah, this is a beautiful, this is a beautiful book, like the, the end pages and the cover design and the, it is really lovely. Like they put a lot of effort into this book, which makes it sad that I don't think it did that well for them. Um, but regardless, I'm happy that even in this small way, we were able to get this this book and it is the it is what was adapted into the show so if you're wanting to read what was adapted into the show pick up the novel although i think you'd have to get it secondhand probably because i don't think this is in print anymore it is a hardcover as well just by the way a very lovely hardcover um so worth your money worth the investment if you're a fan of Uehashi and her novels and uh, Moribito, or Beast Player, Beast Master, Aaron, whatever it is. Um, yeah, yeah, nice to have fun little, fun little addition to my library. So that's everything that I got for the month of September. Uh, <laughs> numbers probably boosted a lot by Inoboku SS, but quite a few um, finales, quite a few debuts. Um, some exciting, interesting little unusual things. A lot of stuff that I was pretty excited for and wasn't disappointed by. A couple things that I was excited for and was not as enthralled with, unfortunately. But we'll see how how it goes, how I feel when I get to my unhole uh, cycle. But yeah, interesting mix of stuff hopefully for you guys let me know your thoughts on any of the titles that i spoke about today um, if you want some um more in-depth i guess 
uh, or more casual discussion about some of these books. I will be talking about them this week, Saturday, um, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is when the second of my weekly um, live stream roundups will be, uh, where I talk, or wrap ups, where I talk about everything that I read in the week. Um, a couple of these volumes of manga I will be discussing there. Um, otherwise, let me know your comments, your feelings, your opinions in the in the comments below. I love reading them. I do try to re respond to each and every single one of them. As per usual, you can find my Twitter in the description below if you're wanting to reach out to me or follow me. I'm there pretty pretty regularly. <laughs> Just keep up to date with everything that G and my posting schedule and what I might be reading. Um, yeah, so uh, otherwise, <laughs> thank you guys so, so much for watching. Um, I am, as always, G from Simply G, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye till then.